In today's video, I'm putting my bike up on the work stand and taking you through my process of cleaning, inspecting, and maintaining my bike. So far this year, I've ridden around 1,500 kilometers on my Argon Sum. I'm going to show you everything I do to keep my bike in top condition so you can do this for yourself at home. The first thing that I like to do is remove both of the wheels, which makes cleaning a lot easier. I'm also going to remove the chain from the bike using the quick link so I can clean it and then submerge it in hot wax. Because the chain has previously been stripped and waxed, I'm just going to be soaking it in boiling water for around 10 minutes to remove any old wax and dust. I'm also going to set up my wax system and get the wax heating up so that it's melted when the chain has finished soaking. While I wait for the chain and the wax, I'm going to start cleaning the bike. Using a new microfiber cloth, I'm going to clean the brakes and rotors first while it's still brand new. A dirty cloth can transfer dirt to the pads and result in contamination and decrease brake performance. I'm using isopropyl alcohol in the cloth to floss in between the pads and also wipe down the rotors, making sure to only use clean sections of the cloth for each part. Next, I can move on to cleaning the rest of the bike. I'm using a spray bottle filled with water to mist the bike and then wiping it down with a microfiber cloth. I prefer using mist over a pressure washer or hose because it doesn't risk introducing water into the bearings or internal cables, but it still allows dirt to be loosened for cleaning. While I'm cleaning, I'm also closely inspecting all of the parts. I'm checking the frame for any scratches, chips, or damage. I'm checking the components for abnormal dirt buildup are marks, and I'm also checking to make sure all of the parts are tight and secure. Many of you might say my bike already looks pretty clean, and in a lot of ways, you're right. A wax chain runs a lot cleaner than an oil chain, so the entire drivetrain doesn't get that thick black sludge that is common on road bikes. I also haven't ridden in wet or rainy conditions, so there isn't too much buildup of sand or road spray. But giving your bike a quick wipe down like this is really helpful, especially from an inspection standpoint, so you can catch problems early and keep issues at a minimum. With the bike wiped down, I can move back over to the chain. I'm wiping it down with the cloth to remove loosened dirt and some of the old wax. All of the remaining old wax will remelt when it's submerged, and residual water will boil off, so the chain doesn't have to be spotless before doing the waxing. Next, I can put the chain on my dipping tool and submerge it in the melted wax. It's recommended to swish the chain around for 30 seconds before allowing it to sit for 10 minutes. It's also recommended not to wax the quick link, since it will make it more difficult to snap into place. While I'm waiting for the chain, I can now check all of the bolts and fasteners on the bike to make sure they're still tight. Road vibration can often loosen bolts, and when I'm tuning up bikes, I often find a lot of loose bolts. My process is to check each bolt by hand and see if there's any movement of the bolt. If the bolt moves easily, I'll know I need to tighten it up to the recommended torque. For some of the small and more delicate bolts, like bottle cage bolts or derailleur hanger bolts, I like to use feel to tighten these, as it's often hard to feel the strength of the fastener through the torque wrench, and it's easy to overdo it and strip the threads. On more sturdy bolts, like those found on the handlebar, I'm first checking for movement by hand, which I ended up finding on all of them, and then using the torque wrench to get them to the precise torque. The risk of damaging carbon parts by over-tightening is real, and can be expensive if you make a mistake. So for most bolts, a torque wrench is an important tool. I also like to check the cassette and disc brake rotor lock rings, as I find these often loosen off after a few thousand kilometers of riding. Next, I'm briefly going back to the chain for a quick final swish on the wax before removing it and hanging it to the dry. The drying also takes around 10 to 15 minutes. While I was waiting for the chain to cool, I went to work on the front disc brake, which had developed a slight rub. I reinstalled the front wheel, spun it, and listened to the point where the rotor was rubbing the pads. After isolating this point, I came in with the rotor alignment tool and did a small bend to try and straighten the rotor. I find this process is pretty fussy and comes down to millimeters of clearance, so it's usually quite a few rounds of adjusting it and testing it to get it lined up. In some cases, it will be necessary to adjust the caliper alignment as well, but in this case, straightening the rotor solved the problem. Next, I could remove the chain from the dipping tool and reinstall it on the bike. If you're using a Shimano chain, it's important to remember they are directional, and the writing side of the chain should be facing outwards. It's also recommended to replace the quick link after every use, although reusing it can be done at your own risk. I'll be reusing mine since it's only its second snap and it still feels secure. And with that, this mid-season tune-up is done. My bike is cleaned, inspected, lubricated, all tightened up and ready to go. Maintenance steps from here is just chain lubing every 300 to 500 kilometers with drip wax and weekly inflation of the tires. This process should take you anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes and will help your bike ride better and last longer as a result.